Okay, yeah, this is actually looking really good. Very surprised by what this little x86 single board computer can do with SteamOS. What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. There's no doubt that there's a lot of people out there that love the Steam Deck, including myself. This is actually my favorite handheld gaming PC and it's definitely changed the game. But you know, besides the hardware, one of my favorite things about the deck is the operating system. And in this video, we're gonna be installing SteamOS 3 on a single board computer. So this is known as the Udo Bolt or Udo, really depends on how you want to pronounce it, but I've actually had this in my possession for a little while. I did a couple videos on it when it was initially released, and this is actually powered by a Ryzen chip. We've got four cores, eight threads with built-in Radeon 8 graphics. And you know, I actually forgot about this until I was recently going through a few things, and I kind of pulled it out and got the idea to go ahead and install Steam Deck OS on this board. So at the time this was released, it was the most powerful x86 single board computer on the market, and they did sell a case for it that kind of turned it into a mini PC. And it's using an embedded Ryzen APU with a boost clock up to 3.6 gigahertz. On paper, I mean, the CPU side of things with this little chip here is kind of on par with the Steam Deck CPU, but the built-in iGPU does leave a little more to be desired. I mean, when you compare it to the new RDNA 2 iGPUs, but either way, we can install Steam Deck OS on this, and I really was interested to see how this little thing performs. On the channel, we've run the operating system on a bunch of different mini PCs and desktop computers, but we've never tested it on a single board computer until today. And by the way, this is the Udo Bolt V8. They also made a V3 with a lower end APU, but this is the most powerful one they released. And with this, we will have to add RAM. It supports DDR4. So we've got some SODIMM RAM here, and I'm just going to install 16 gigabytes. Now, this is actually 3200 megahertz RAM, and from the BIOS, we can actually take it up to that clock speed, which is going to help out with those built-in graphics. When it comes to the storage, this does have 32 gigabytes of eMMC storage soldered to the board, and we could run the operating system directly from that, but as you know, with these games, we're going to need more storage. So I opted to use a 1 terabyte M.2 SSD, and luckily, we've actually got three M.2 slots on the bottom of this board. Plus, there's a SATA connector on the side, so I could have went with a 2.5-inch drive or even a 3.5-inch drive, but I had this ready to go, and I figured we'd go ahead and install it on the Udo Bolt. Now, when it comes to the operating system, obviously, we want to run the same thing that the Steam Deck has on it, and unfortunately, Valve hasn't released SteamOS 3 to the public yet, at least something that we could install on different hardware. But luckily, there's a project right now over on GitHub known as Hollow ISO, and what they've done is actually taken the Steam Deck recovery image, reworked it so we can install it on all kinds of hardware. Right now, they are having trouble with NVIDIA and Intel GPUs due to the new updates to Steam, but luckily, we don't have to worry about that with this because we've got built-in Radeon graphics, and that's exactly what we're going to be running with. I could install an M.2 Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module here, but I'm just going to go with these two dongles. I've got a Bluetooth 4.0 adapter and a Wi-Fi 5 adapter. We've got two full-size USB ports on the front. I can plug these directly into. And you might notice I've got a Steam controller. We could always connect this over Bluetooth if we wanted to, or use the included dongle that came with the controller. But I'm not a huge fan of it due to the trackpad, so I'm just going to be using an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth. There's one last thing that I wanted to do here. We could just set this on the desk like it is, but I kind of wanted to stand it up. And like I mentioned, they did make a case for it. It's actually a really nice aluminum case, but it really does turn it into a mini PC. So what I've got here are just some plastic standoffs. These come in really handy for a lot of different projects. And I'm just going to put a couple of these right in the mounting holes. That way we could actually stand this vertically right on the desk. So uh, it is a bit front heavy. I wanted the longer one sticking out of the front, but with something like this, it does work pretty well. Now we're almost ready to get started here, but I did want to give you a quick rundown on the specs. For the CPU or the APU, we've got the AMD Ryzen embedded V1605B. Four cores, eight threads, base clock of 2 GHz, and a boost up to 3.6. Now from the BIOS, we can adjust the TDP, and I've gone to 35 watts, which is really maxing this little embedded chip out. That fan's going to be basically at 100% the whole time, but I wanted to get the max performance out of this thing. This does have built-in Radeon Vega 8 graphics at 1200 megahertz, and I've added 16 gigabytes of DDR4 at 3200 megahertz. 
All right, so we'll go ahead and boot this up. There's a little power button right on the front here, and uh, that fan should kick right on. I've got it set up so it just kind of runs all the time. It's not super loud. I actually wish it put out a little more air to keep it cooler because at 35 watts, this thing can reach, you know, up to 85 and even 90 degrees sometimes with an open air configuration, but I am really pushing this thing to the limit at 35 watts. All right, so here we are, SteamOS 3 running on the Udo Bolt. I've actually gone through here and installed a bunch of different games that I wanted to test out, and we do have the overlay that we have on the Steam Deck. The only thing we can't change here is the TDP directly from this menu, but we can from the BIOS, and we are set at 35 watts here just to get as much as possible out of this little board. We also have access to system-wide FSR and we'll probably need it with these Vega graphics. I mean, this isn't a super powerful board. The CPU itself at 35 watts does a pretty decent job, but uh, you know, GPU-wise, we're still working with Vega here. And if we take a look at the information here, we've got that embedded Ryzen CPU, four cores, eight threads, 16 gigs of RAM, and those Vega 8 graphics. Now these only go up to 1200 megahertz, Kind of wish we could overclock them, but uh, you know, even from the BIOS, there's nothing we can do about it. So what we're going to do here is just start off light. We're going to go with some easier to run stuff and then work our way up. And first on the list, we've got Cuphead. Super easy one to run. This even works on very low end Intel chips. I didn't have any doubt that it wasn't going to run it at full speed. And as you can see here, we're at 60 FPS. So really, when it comes to these lighter 2D and indie games, like let's say Dead Cells or Shredder's Revenge, we're not going to have an issue running it on this little board with SteamOS 3. So let's take it up just a bit. Left for Dead 2. So I did run into one little issue here, and I've actually had this happen a couple different times while running Hollow ISO. I can't get VSync to unlock with this game, no matter what I do, from the settings in the game or the Steam overlay. We're just right there at 60, but it's doing a great job. And we're at 1080p maxed out here with this game, and the other Source games should run just as well. Portal, Portal 2, Half-Life 2, all of those are going to run fine on the Udo Bolt V8. I also wanted to throw a fighting game in the mix, so here's Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, and initially my first choice was Injustice 2, but it kept crashing on me once you start the game up, and in the past using Proton we had that same issue, and it has been resolved, but unfortunately I think it's come back here with the latest updates to either Proton or, you know, SteamOS itself. But I was able to get Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite up and running, 720p with a low medium mix, running pretty good. Now initially once you start the game up you will get a few stutters and I believe that's kind of Proton caching the shaders, but once that's resolved the game runs great. Alright, so moving over to The Witcher 3. 720p, low settings with FSR set to performance. We're right there in the mid 40s. I actually wasn't expecting to get this kind of performance out of it, but of course we're not at 60. And even with FSR set to ultra performance, we just can't hit it. So I'd say our best bet with a little board like this would be lock this at 30 FPS, but then we can actually take it up to medium with no FSR and get a really nice steady 30 out of it. So here it is, we're still at 720p, but we're at medium settings, no FSR, locked at 30. Now every once in a while I did see it dip down to 29, and of course, you know, 45 FPS would be nice on this, and we can hit that with FSR set to performance, but I do think that this looks a lot better at those medium settings. Next up, Project Cars 2, one of my favorite games for the Rally Cross, and this was really impressive. Now we're at 720p with a low medium mix, but we're in the mid 80s with this game here. I know it's an older one, but uh, again, we're working with a lower end chip. This is kind of what we need to deal with right now. Not bad, still a super fun game to play, and I could actually play this all day long on this little board, and I wouldn't mind locking it down at 60, but we do average 83 FPS, low medium settings at 720p on this little setup. Another one I wanted to test was Elden Ring, and going into this I actually didn't think it was going to be able to even get out of its own way. But we're at 800 by 600, so we've got a low resolution here. We are using system-wide FSR, and we can average 42 FPS. Might not sound like a lot to somebody with a higher end gaming PC or laptop, but on a single board computer, this isn't bad at all. 
And the final game I wanted to test for this video was Cyberpunk 2077. Low settings, FSR set to performance 720p, we averaged 34 FPS. Of course, we're not going to be able to hit 60 even with ultra performance FSR and the lowest resolution on this little board. But it would be totally possible to go ahead and lock this down at 30 FPS. We could take a few of the settings up to medium and you could actually have a pretty decent time with Cyberpunk 2077 on this single board computer. So overall, I think this little board did pretty well with SteamOS 3. Now, there were a few games that, I, you know, I had some crashing going on. There was nothing I could really do about it right now. I could have tried to reinstall the operating system and re-download the games, but I already had so much stuff downloaded, I figured I'd just go ahead and skip those. And the main ones were Injustice 2 and both of the new Spider-Man games. Unfortunately, Miles Morales and Spider-Man Remastered just crashed on me as soon as I got to the main menu. I tried verifying the file system using a different version of Proton, but you know, I'm going to chalk it up to drivers right now, and SteamOS 3, at least at the time of making this video, was never meant to be run on a board like this, but it's totally possible, as you see. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. I thought it would be a pretty interesting video to install this on an SPC, and yeah, I mean, performance isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below, and like always, thanks for watching.